So today you join me here at Westwood Lakes in Boston and I'm going to be talking through how I won this year's Fishermania final. up to Fishermania I only actually got a chance to come down for one practice on, on here on Falcon you know there was only a few matches on so I only actually got a chance to come down once the week before. I do know this lake quite well and I know in the past whenever I've come on this lake I've done well fishing shallow with maggots also catching fish in the edge um, so I was going to come and try that but I also wanted to try some worms and casters as well because I know a lot of anglers have been catching well on worms and casters in practice so on the actual day of the practice match I drew round the back on a think about permanent peg 25 and the other side is a fish with worms and casters and I didn't have the greatest of matches I had 80 odd pound come nowhere really and I think about 125 pound one and I think he'd caught on casters so I couldn't really make my mind up whether I was best trying to fish with casters on the day or just going back to what I normally do on this lake and because I only got a chance to come practicing once I was a bit unsure but I just thought what I'd be best off doing sticking with what I know best ground bait and maggots few micro pellets and that's the sort of baits that I tend to use when I'm coming on the festivals here and when I'm going to pick place like partridge and doing you know my day-to-day -day fishing so I just decided stick to what I'm confident in Right, so I'm just going to go through the bait that I chose to use for Fishermania. Obviously, I've come to this venue quite a bit on the festivals, so I decided to go with the baits that I've caught on here in the past and that I, you know, I'm sort of most confident in. I think that's a good tip when you're fishing these big matches is you know, just to stick with the stuff what you're confident in. So ground bait wise, it's my standard ground bait what I tend to use for all my fishing um, when I'm fishing on these sort of snake lake venues. Blake's pole mix and I mixed a kilo up on the day, so just one kilo bag, and that's about three pints of ground bait. So the way I tend to mix it is a bit like a recipe. So I'm just gonna get the full one kilo bag straight into the bucket. And then I've already measured out my water, and it's just about an inch less water than what there is ground bait. So like I said, I'm mixing up three pints, so I've done about an inch less in my uh, three pint tub, and that's about perfect. And I just put it all in in one go and by doing it like that it ensures that I can saturate the ground bait and that my ground bait is an altering inconsistency through the day I tend to find if you do it bit by bit it ends up drying out and drying out and you're forever adding water to it so just to get it nice and consistent throughout the day that's how I tend to mix it so the next thing that I've I bought on the day was some fishery micro pellets they're a two mil scretting type pellet um, so they soak up very similar to our uh, carp pellets in the Blakes range and basically all I do to, mi to mix them I'm just going to put a full bag into a tub and then just cover them level with water so I'm just going to get them so that the water is over the top of the pellets just like that and then just literally leave them. Again, I wanna make sure that I saturate all my micras. They're as heavy as possible and they've took on as much water as possible. And that, that just means again, that they're not drying my ground bait out when I'm mixing them together. And again, they stay a nice consistency all day doing it like that. The final thing are just a couple of hook baits. I've got some four mil expanders. These are just the Blake's expanders, just prepared in a little uh, sandwich bag like this, bit of water over the top and that's perfect. 
and then just a few red and white maggots for the hook. You can easily get led by, you know, following baits that are working on a venue. But I think one key thing, what I like to, you know, talk about a lot to people when I'm coaching and sort of stuff like that, is it's really important just to fish the way you're confident and the way you think you're going to have the best chance of doing well. So fishing to your strengths. On the actual day, there was loads of good anglers in the final. A um, lot of top F1 anglers, all very good at this sort of style of fishing. So I knew that, you know, I was going to have to get it right on the day to do well. On the day I actually drew peg 10 in Fishermania, which is a uh, permanent peg nine, quite a good area. I just wanted to be anywhere up this top end of the lake. So sort of from my peg up to Andy Bennett's peg on the day, this top end of the lake always just seems to be a consistent area. So I was really happy with that. Um, I've actually fished in this area before. I've been on pegs 10 and 12. So I knew roughly the way it plumbed up and I knew that there's normally a few fish there. I noticed as well the night before when we come down, we come down and had a look at the peg that I'd got that nice hay bale in my left edge. I thought, also thought that maybe give you know a bit of advantage, a bit of cover in my left edge. So that was in the back of my mind that maybe that left edge could be really good. And then obviously shallow fishing with it being a lake full of F1s, I expected that to play a big part as well. And they were going to be the main two lines, what I was going to focus on, that short line and down the edge. In practice, I think we've not had a lot of rain this year, so the, the lake's quite low. And the problem is, across on the, your across line, is you're only sort of finding eight inches of water against the far bank. And I think, you know, you're struggling to catch fish across. So I think for most people, that across line was going to be a write-off. So I didn't want to waste too much time on that. And I also thought if you were going to win, if you were going to catch enough weight to win, it was going to be close, either in the edge or shallow or short on the bottom. So they were the main three. Uh, sort of approach is short on the bottom and shallow and down the edge that I was going to go for. Arriving to my peg on the day of the final, first thing I noticed was that the wind was blowing up from right to left so that was a good sign. I felt like you know it was going to help hold a few fish in our area. I also thought that the pegs to my left along the, the main back straight were going to be good as well but I just fancied that we were in the right area so I was really happy with that. Um, just talking to Kieran on the morning, we were still discussing tactics a little bit. Um, it had sort of a, a bit of a niggly doubt that maybe casters would be good. I did bring some on the day, but I didn't end up fishing with him. I did decide that I'd just better off fishing with maggots. So that was another thing that I ended up, you know, making my mind up on. And we just felt like looking at it, that we were in with a shout and there was a bit of confidence that we could be okay. So I was really happy with that. On the day as well, it was a nice warm day. Felt like it was going to fish well. There was fish topping, there was fish moving about, and it felt like you know the crowds and the people walking around weren't going to put sort of an end to the fishing. It weren't going to push the fish out. They were going to feed, so that was good. And plumbing up, obviously, I didn't. I've never fished that peg before, so I didn't know exactly what depth it was going to be, sort of in my edge and short. But plumbing up, plumbed up my left hand side, and it plumbed up absolutely perfect. There was a nice flat shelf just short of the hay bale at about five six meters where it was sort of 16 inch deep and it was probably flat for around eight or ten inches before it sloped away which is absolutely perfect i know from doing a lot of f1 fishing in the past if you can get that nice little flat area to fish on they're a lot easier to catch and it just makes everything much easier to fish you can be more accurate and you can feed more accurate so that was really good i was really confident of catching down that edge especially with having that bit of cover from the hay bale as well and then my other, like I say, my other main spot was going to be my short line. I plumbed that up and I actually did actually set two little spots up on my short line. I wasn't necessarily going to fish both, but what I decided to do, I plumbed up at five metres, which was going to be my line in the deepest water for fishing up and down, which is where I was going to lose feed maggots. And I also set up just short, just coming up the slope. I did also put a rig up for that as well. Uh, they were identical, the rigs, but they were just slightly different in depth, just in case if I was going to be mainly fishing on the bottom and I was getting a lot of fizzing on the silty bottom I could just come up the shelf just onto a touch harder bottom if needs be but I was expecting not to do that with obviously having to take the nets in and out I thought that little bit further line and the edge would be the main two spots getting ready for the match we were looking about we had plenty of time on the day and we were just sort of assessing what we were going to do and we felt like the best approach would be to start on pellets in the edge uh, feed me maggot sh uh, shallow and then if needs be, later in the day, swap to ground bait. And they were the simple approach, three different baits, 
and just hoping that there's going to be enough fish there on the day to be able to compete. So all in in the match and like I said my plan was I was going to start in my left hand edge and I was going to start on pellets so feeding micro pellets, fishing an expander on the hook, nice simple F1 fishing, muddy style float and just going to pot it nice and accurate and just try and fish for a few fish at the start. What I've found when I've been on Falcon Lake before in the past is that first half an hour, there's always an initial hit of fish in the edge. And what I was also thinking is obviously on Fishermania, every half an hour, you take your net out and weigh in. So I was thinking if I can have a good half an hour in the edge before I take my nets out, then that just gives me a good start because I wasn't sh too sure how taking the nets out was going to affect it on the day initially. But as it's turned out, I've just started little cut down Guru medium pole pot filling it with micros and I've fed it and I think on the day it took me maybe two or three minutes to get my first indication and then I've caught one and I think my first fish was an F1, nice F1 about two pound. That's another thing I tend to find on this lake. Your fish that you catch short and in the edge are generally a better stamp than the fish you catch further across so by fishing close to yourself you, you know, tend to catch a better stamp of fish as well which helps. I've caught that F1 and then I just for that first half an hour I just had a steady you know catching nice and smooth I said to Kieran like it was noticeable that the bites were nice and positive so we were happy that we're fishing the right bait to begin with and it would plumbed up well so I was happy with that Kieran was having a watch around and seeing what was happening he looked to the right and I, we felt like I was beating the anglers to my right we expected the pegs to my left to be quite strong Arthur Hill me on peg 15 had a good start fishing shallow and we knew that was going to be Arthur's plan very good shallow angler and um, so he was going to be a good marker for if I was going to go out shallow myself later on. I was just feeding that shallow line to start with, not doing anything daft, just chucking 20 maggots in regular. Um, I wasn't sure whether I was going to mainly be fishing shallow or on the bottom on that line. I was hoping to catch shallow, but I didn't want to commit too much and really feed aggressively shallow and then wipe my bottom line out before the start. So just fed it nice and sort of steady. And it was just good first half an hour. I think I weighed just just short of eight kilo or just over eight kilo. Um, I was third after the first half an hour. So that was a nice start fishing in that edge. And what my plan was then was just to, after the first half an hour weigh in, was just to try back in the edge and see what effect that edge, and then taking the net out had actually had on that edge. And on the day, I went back in. I think I might've had one more after I took the net out. And then I went back in, no more bites. So my next move was to move on and have a go on my short line because I'd been feeding it for like, so like half an hour, 35 minutes. So I was expecting there to be a few fish there. And all I did, I didn't want to swap my feed yet because pellets were so good early. All I did was come back and probably put two or three cab pots worth of micros in and just fed that just so that I had a bit of bait coming in that might have drew a few fish back in the edge for me. And I just went out on my shallow rig and on the day, I actually didn't have any bite shallow. I think I might have missed one or two bites straight away where there was a couple of fish there waiting after me priming it. And that was it, no more bites. So I actually dropped onto the bottom. I think I might have caught one or two fish on that. Might have foul up the couple. That tends to be the nature of the beast on this lake with it being very silty, you do foul look a few, but foul up the couple, caught a couple nothing great but I just nicked a couple of fish and that tended to be the pattern for the early part of my match and going into the middle part of the match I just have to feed a little bit of bait in the edge catch a couple there drop onto my short line and it was going okay I wasn't you know really up there in the match for the first sort of hour I was sort of in the top half and I was doing okay putting a few fish in a net and it just got me settled into the match caught a few fish and I just had it in my head that later on I could feed that edge a little bit more aggressively and try and catch some bigger fish later on if needs be because one good thing I did learn from the practice match last week uh sorry the week before was that there was some better carp there was quite a few three four pound fish so I knew that there was a chance of catching them late on and I also was hoping that later on in the day my shallow line could get better as well so decent start put a few fish in the net early got myself sort of within the race I was in the match and I was happy with that and I was just hoping that later on in the day I could have stronger finish. Middle part of my match it was quite slow um, but I was always putting a few fish in the net and I think that was one thing that I, me and Kieran thought was very important just to make sure that I was trying to keep nicking a few fish keep putting an odd fish in the net so we felt on the day the best way to do that was to feed a little bit of bait in your edge rest it for a little while drop on your short line 
try and nick a fish on that if you could and then just keep going in the edge and taking little runs of fish again i was carrying on just fishing with pellets in the edge i didn't want to commit to a big change when i could still get an odd bite in the edge so i just carried on with that carried on doing what i was doing and kept dropping on my short line I also did have a quick look across, but on the day, to be fair, the, the wind was quite uh, bad. It was quite shallow across and I didn't expect to spend a lot of time there. I had a quick go for sort of 10 minutes and it wasn't very good. And I put it back down and went back on my short line. And just quickly, my short line, I decided to fish with a 4x14 Maggie float. It's sort of three foot depth there. Um, and I just shot, fished it like that with a 414 because there was a bit of wind, just wanted to hold my rigs still. And also on here, when you throw your maggots in, you tend to get a few fish coming up off the bottom and you get an odd little sign. So I just wanted to make sure I was using a nice positive float for that. And then one big changing point in my match was, like I said, I didn't want to commit to feeding ground bait too early, but I had a spell where I fed me micros with a big pot, had a drop in short, never caught anything, dropped in the edge and I never caught anything. And I think I had my worst half an hour in that period. I don't even think I quite had a kilo, just short of a kilo. And then that's when I felt like I had to make a decision to change the ground bait. So decided to feed 100 mil of ground bait down the edge, mixed with a few micro pellets, potted that in. And like I said, I had a quick go short, but I noticed I had a bit of a boil in me in my edge. So I thought I'm gonna to have to have a drop in and just see if they're there. And I dropped in and the first bite I actually had that feed was a six pound carp, my biggest fish of the day. And I think that fish really helped boost me up back into the match. And I think I had maybe four or five other fish, two more carp and a few F1s. And I think I weighed about eight and a half kilo that weigh in. And I think that was the best weigh in in that half an hour. And that really got me back into the match and feeling like I could, you know, get back up there. Especially if I could carry on catching them real decent stamp fish, them mirrors and commons. Because I know Arter who was leading, he was mainly catching F1s. He was, and on this lake, they're probably about a pound and a half. So if I was catching three pound fish, I only had to catch half the amount of fish what he was catching. That's how I felt. Um, so I just thought that was a positive move, feeding that ground bait. And I was just hoping it was going to continue to get stronger later into the match. So the last hour of my match, this is where things really started to go quick now down that edge. I'd been feeding it regular, like I say, with 100 mil of ground bait, potting it and having to come off it. But what happened this last hour is I was able to keep dropping in and regularly getting bites without having to pot it. So obviously there was a good arrival of fish and the fish have come in to feed later on. And the nice thing about it as well, they were mainly carp, they were better fish. So it was really getting the feeling that I could get up there quite high in the match that last hour if i'm honest i didn't feel like i could catch arter up because he was consistently putting a few fish in shallow all the time and he had quite a decent lead i'm not sure what the lead was in the last hour i think it was over 10 kilo though so i expected him to be hard to beat and i could see he was keeping putting some fish in the net and applying the pressure so i just thought to myself there's 10 grand to win for second there's two grand for a section just try and do as well as i can and see how i ended up and just really try and give it me all that last hour to catch as many as i could when the fish were feeding in my peg so again i was feeding just ground bait with a cad pot i stepped up to a large cad pot i felt like with the carp in my peg it's important to feed a decent amount of bait just potting it in with my large cad pot ground bait and micro pellets and fishing three or four white maggots on the hook and i just had a really good run of carp it was nice and steady not many missed bites nice and smooth and it worked absolutely perfect for that last hour I think I had around eight kilo again in that penultimate half hour. And then that last half hour, I had a really good, my best half hour of the day catching 10 kilo. I think it was about eight fish. And when we weighed in, it sounded like I might have had a chance of coming second. That's what they were talking about. I weighed in 10 kilo, 350, I think. And we worked it out and we thought I was probably gonna be second because going into that last half an hour, I was six kilo behind and Arter had caught four or five fish, so we thought that he'd just about have enough to win it. But as it turned out, Arter actually only had three kilo in that fast, uh, final weigh-in, and obviously I didn't know that at the time. I seen them weighing him in. All I heard was a few sort of gasps really coming up from over there, so I wasn't sure whether who'd won it. I thought that Arter might not have won it, so still didn't know. But it started to filter around, people started to walk around, and it looked like I might have won it. 
and I just couldn't believe it at the time. I don't, still don't think it's really sunk in now because it was, I was never leading until that final weigh-in, so I still didn't think I'd probably done it, but they worked it out and as it turned out i had managed to just pip it at the end i think i won it by about 410 grams andy dyson on peg one had also had a really good end to the match and he'd managed to catch some big carp fishing with pace short so he had a really good finish caught some like i say some better stamp fish and i think that was really important for me and andy dyson is we managed to catch some better carp and it got us back up into the match so Andy Dyson ended up second, so we picked up 10 grand. Great bloke, massive well done to Andy Dyson. And then Arta managed to come third. Just managed to slow down late on. I think the cameras and the people walking around might have just affected his peg late on. And uh, luckily for me, I managed to just do enough. So absolutely buzzing. Like I say, still can't really believe it. Crazy, you know, still just feel like... Um, I've been really lucky that them better fish turn up for me, but that's fishing and uh, just managed to get me a bit of luck. So me and Kieran also had to jump in. Um, we didn't really know whether we wanted to jump in, but because it was a bit of a uh, surprise ending, we were just straight in, straight in the lake. It's only very shallow, so straight into the silt and brilliant moment for me and Kieran. We put a lot of miles into our fishing and it's just nice that one of us had finally had a chance of winning one of them finals. So one good thing about winning the final as well is it also means I've qualified for next year's final. So really looking forward to that. It's going to free me up a bit of time to have a go at some other events as well. And it just means that I don't have to worry about focusing on that so much next year. So I'm really happy that I'm in the final again next year. Hopefully it's going to be back here at Westwood Lakes. I think it was a really good final. There was some good weights caught. I'm not sure if it is definitely, but it sounds like it will be. So really looking forward to that made up to be back there for next year it's such a great event to be a part of with the cameras and stuff like that made up so fingers crossed it'll go well again next year